Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the last mini tips for sejarah paper in SPM. So first of all, I'll brief you on the exam paper first. So you have paper 1, 2 and 3. Paper 1 is to be done in an hour. So you have 40 questions and you will be 40 marks. But the weightage of it is only 30%. So the 40 marks will be converted into 30%. And then paper 2 has to be done within 2 hours and 30 minutes. And you have 4 subjective questions, 4 structured questions that you have to answer. And then you have essay as well. So for essay, out of 7 questions, you have to only answer 3. And each of the essay questions will give you 20 marks. So 3 times 2, you get 60. And then for each of the structured questions, you get 10 marks. 10 times 4, you get 40. So in total, paper 2 will give you 100 marks but then it will be converted to 50%. So the weightage of paper 2 is 50%, which is the highest among all the three papers. So doing well in paper 2 is definitely one of the key points to getting A plus for sejarah in SPM. And then paper 3 is like an open book test, so you can bring in whatever materials that you have to use. And then you'll be given a theme one month before you probably have the theme by now, but then the exact questions will only be given on the day itself. You have 3 hours to complete this paper. The total marks is 100 and it will be converted to 20%. So the weightage of this paper is only 20%. So now that we have gone through the format of the paper, I'll be talking more about how you can actually prepare yourself within these last few days for Sejarah Paper 1, 2 and 3. And we'll start with Paper 1 first. So Paper 1 is objective questions and what you can do is to take all your previous exercises, whether from school or from the activity books that you have bought or just any exercises that you have, past your questions, whatever it is, and just read through the answers. So I have said this before in my previous video on Sejarah. Um, I don't know if you've watched that video or if you've like taken my advice, but basically what I said is to really attempt objective questions on your own, like maybe for structured or essay, you have no choice but to copy the answer and try to memorize it. But for objective, you really have to read through a topic and then attempt it on your own. Like whatever you remember, that is your answer. And then you have to go through it in blue pen or in pencil. And then mark the questions with red pen. So life would actually be so much easier for you if you have done that. If you have went through all the objective questions based on your own memory. And you have um, marked all the questions with red pen. So now you can just go back and read all the questions that you got wrong for. So take note of everything, of your all your mistakes and make sure not to make that mistake again because like it will take too much time if you are trying to read every single question but if you attempted those questions based on your memory and what you can't remember is what you have to remember for the exam. So just go through all those exercises that you have done and then read the answers, take note of the ones that you got wrong for and make sure that you never make that same mistake again in SPM. So basically within these few days, that's all you have to do for paper one is just to like reread all the questions. If you have any more questions that you haven't attempted yet, then go ahead and try that based on your memory and then mark it. Um, basically that's all for paper one. Past years are actually especially important for paper one because if you notice the trend, um, a lot of objective questions are often repeated. So if you go through the past year questions properly out of like all the years that you have, make sure that you really take note of those answers then doing well in paper one shouldn't be a problem. You have been doing so many exercises all through from four and from five. So getting high marks for paper one shouldn't be a problem. And then next we'll move on to paper two. So Sejarah paper two is like one of the most difficult papers that you can sit for in SPM, at least in my opinion. Um, it's either biology or sejarah that is the hardest because there are just so many facts to remember. So how do you actually do well for sejarah paper 2? So the way to know how to write essays is by using essay plans always. So essay plans can be created either from your textbook or from your reference books or even from the answer scheme provided in the past year or in the exercise books. So those answer schemes are really important because if you refer to your textbook, you might not know where the most important information are. 
but if you refer to the answers at the back of the past year book or of the activity book, then you know exactly which points are important for you and you can just pick those out and try to remember those points. So during this time period, it will be good to go through as many essay questions as you can, whether from activity books or from past year questions. Just try to go through as many activity books as you can, refer to the answers and try to make essay plans from there. It is good if you have done it consistently um, all through several months or through from point from five. If you have done essay plans consistently and you have done it all through that, then that's really great. You can just like refresh your memory and read those essay plans. But if you haven't, then you can like read through it now and then just try to jot down a few important points. Get a piece of paper and then when you're reading through the answers, jot down some important keywords that you really want to remember. And so during this time of the year, there's always a list of Soalan Ramalan that you get. Um, like those are the essay questions that will be there and then you'll have a few topics given to you. So do you depend on Soalan Ramalan? Well, my answer is to not depend on that, but also don't neglect that. Okay, let's say you have a list of Soalan Ramalan, so you're going to make essay plans on those things also, but don't neglect other things. You're going to make essay plans for all things that are in the list but also for all the other things that are not in the list so for the soalan ramalan that i got for my year i think none or like very few of the topics from that soalan ramalan actually came out so it was a good thing that i did not depend on the soalan ramalan i mean it varies from year to year and no one can say for sure whether like those topics will come out or not just prepare for that but prepare for other things as well and then another thing is when you get the book containing past year questions, usually within the first few pages, you have the analysis of the topics which have already come out in like the previous years. So if you are really running out of time, if you really, really, really don't have time, then you can maybe analyze it a little bit, like all the topics which came out for structured and essay for last year, maybe it won't be repeated again this year. like. Nothing is for sure, anything could happen, but if you really, really don't have time, then maybe that is one way to narrow down the syllabus a little bit. For paper 2, try to write as many answers as you can, even for structured part. If they say like berikan, dua, whatever, then you can write extra points that you remember as well, in case one of it is wrong. And this is especially true for essay questions. Pick the one that you are most confident in, like, you know that topic well then pick that question and then you're going to write down as many things as you can remember even if you don't know if it's correct or wrong just write it down in case it is right and then for paper three paper three is an open book test and you have three hours to complete that paper in total and it'll be 100 marks but it'll only be converted to 20 marks and mm -hmm. Very important step for paper three is of course to gather your materials. You can get your materials from your textbook, from your reference books, from activity books, from the internet. Um, so when you get the question paper, you're going to take note of the tema that you got and you're going to go through your activity books and exercise books and mark down every single page with the tema and like detach the answers from the back and just highlight the answers. Also, try to think of possible questions. If you search the internet, there's already a list of possible questions and answers for each of the themas. So make sure that you print those out. And also, it is very important to organize your materials before you bring them into the exam hall. If not, you won't even know what you have and what you don't have. So one way to organize your materials before you bring them in into the exam hall is by going through your material and then writing down every single thing that you have. Like let's say you have found Chabaran Menjadikan Malaysia Sepanakara Yang Maju. Then you're going to get a, an A4 paper and you're going to write down Chabaran Menjadikan Malaysia Sepanakara Yang Maju. And then maybe you have another list on Langka Langka so you're going to write down Langka Langka as well. So at the end of the day you're going to have an A4 paper with all the information that you have regarding that topic. And so once you have that piece of paper, it's going to make your life so much easier. Once you get the topic, you can just look through, read through the questions that you have and compare it with the list that you already have. So 
if that thing is in the least great, you can go ahead and search for it. If it's not, then you have to think of the answers by your own. But anyway, it's great to know what materials you have so that you do not miss out on any. And one great way to do that is simply to write down everything that you have on one piece of paper so that you know exactly what you have. Usually the questions from paper 3 will be like 50% facts and then 50% your opinions. So make sure that when you are stating your opinion, state it clearly with grammatically correct sentences and try to make your sentences rational. If you are lifting sentences directly off the textbook, then make sure that you copy it correctly. Whatever they ask for, there's a paragraph in your textbook, then just copy the entire paragraph. Don't miss out on a single thing, write as much as you can. I have mentioned this in my other video, but I'm going to mention it in this video again in case some of you guys haven't watched that. But when doing paper 3, remember to leave a page. Remember to use one page for every single question. So let's say you have question 1. Um, even if the answer is really short, don't continue down there. You're going to use a new page for a new question. So you're going to write, let's say it's only 5 marks. So write down your points and then move on to the second question. And then um, for the second question, you can just write down your answers as well and then just leave it blank. And then for the third question, you're going to use a new page. And this goes on for all the other questions. Like if some questions, maybe question 7 or 8, are longer and it's like 20 marks, 15 marks, then maybe leave two pages for those questions. The logic behind doing this is that for paper 3, there's always too much time. You have finished the paper within maybe two hours and you have an hour extra so what do you do with that hour you're going to go back and look through from question one and add in stuff that you can add in try to improvise your answer make it better write more stuff down within those three hours your hand is going to hurt but you need those marks so you're going to write down as many things as you can so so it is important to make sure that when you uh, want to come back to write you actually have space to do it so Use one question for one page and then if you think that this is a long question, you need two pages, then just leave two pages for it. During SPM, there will just be a lot of invigilators um, walking around and seeing if you need any help. So if you need extra paper, then you can just ask it from them. Um, make sure that you do not limit your amount of words just because you do not want to ask for paper. This goes for all the subjects as well. Um, do not be afraid to ask for paper, just write more, write as much as you can remember. So that's all I have to say about preparing for Sejarah Paper 1, 2 and 3. If you have been consistently revising um, Sejarah, if you've been making notes all this while, then it shouldn't be a problem. So just keep calm and go into your test and just try to do your best. Remember to really utilize your essay plans read your essay plans over and over again and cover a wide range of topics. Don't just focus on certain topics if you can um, cover all the topics. And in my opinion, it's better to know a little bit from each topic than to know like some of the topic really well and some not at all. So, yeah. Anyways, I wish you all the best for your Sejarah paper. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.